former executive turned lifestyle entrepreneur, Connie is ridiculously dedicated to inspiring individuals to activate their power and live their dream as a lifestyle entrepreneur. It's time to sit down, lie down, or squat down and turn up the volume. Up or Out with Connie starts right now. Well, hey there, it's Connie Fife, the host of Up or Out with Connie and Jeff, as you could tell. Jeff's not here today. He's off doing his thing, whatever that thing might be right now. But he'll be back um, again for another show. But right now, I just want to jump into our guest. He is a returning guest. And his story is just so phenomenal that it's, it's just really important that we share this with you. And I want to share it with you again in case you miss it for the first time around. But If you did, listen now, and then also go back and listen to the previous episode with Coach Jim Johnson from Rochester, New York. So, Jim, welcome to the show. Thank you, Connie. It's good to be back. I'm so thrilled that you're here. So, again, we've had a couple of changes since you've been here last, but we continue to talk about... And working with with executives, with professionals, so helping them see how they can increase their strategies in their life, whether it be moving up in the C-suite or in some cases they're moving out and they're becoming entrepreneurs. But they're really, in, so many times they're stuck. People are stuck or they think, oh, I got this this disability that they've given themselves or you know, they don't know how to move forward or, or this happened and now I'm stuck. And you, you have been a tremendous voice of encouragement to helping people move beyond, move, moving beyond all of that stuff that happens in life. And I know your main program is you talk about the seven leadership keys. So let's just jump right in and talk about those leadership keys and how they are really helping people move beyond. And sometimes you got to you know, knock that fear off the shoulder and say, I'm just going for it. I'm going to make it happen. And that's the true leadership spirit in each of us. And I know that you're bringing it out of people. So I'm going to ask you to share what that is. Sure. I was a longtime uh, teacher and a high school basketball coach. And, you know, I, I got noted for being part of this inspirational story with a young man that had autism. One of the things that for me, because I got fired from my first varsity basketball position, was that I figured out after struggling early in my career is that I was if I was going to be a better teacher and a coach, I had to become a better leader. And so the first thing I would advise people before I go into the seven keys is that you got to make leadership or any area of life that you want to be successful study. And you got to keep continuing to learn and grow from that. And and that really manifested well in my career because, you know, I went from a unsuccessful coach to a coach that was being fairly successful to a, a really high level elite coach. In my last decade, we were in made the finals eight times and, and uh, won six. And the reason I think that happened is because I kept growing as a leader. And it's amazing when you keep getting better, usually you're, the people you surround yourself tend to get better. Right. And so, so that was a huge thing for me was that, uh, you know, and it's something that we strive for. And what I did is I really figured out these seven keys. And the, the best thing that I started to do much more effectively is live them. And when yeah, I did okay. that, you know, and I was, I'm far from perfect. I mean, I, I fall off the wagon like everybody else does. But mm-hmm. you know, when I really followed these seven keys wow, my leadership just exploded in a positive way. So let's start with the first one. Yeah, Um, what's that secret sauce? Because uh, I'm sure a lot of people are saying, okay, I want to know what they are. uh, Enough's enough, right? Yeah. Uh, First one is uh, one that, you know, we've heard a lot, uh, and I want to delve into it a little bit, is clarifying your vision. And, you know, as the Bible says, without vision, the people will perish. So, you know, I think you need to have clarity as a leader. And one of the things I delve in when I talk about in my leadership keynote is that developing clear vision is, first of all, knowing who you are. And a couple of things I encourage people to do to be an effective leader in clarifying your vision is you've got to understand what you're all about. And I say there's two things you really need to know. Number one, you should have your own personal mission statement. I believe you should have it written down because when I was clear about that, it really gave me a roadway of 
how I should live my life on a daily basis. In fact, my mission statement is that it is to be an outstanding role model that makes a positive difference in the world by helping others make their dreams come true. And when I started living that consistently, it's amazing how my life took off in a positive way. And so th- th- I think that's the first thing is you got to be clear about your personal mission. And when I ask people in my audiences, a lot of people look at me like I got two heads. Uh, a lot <laughs> of people not thought about that. A question I think we all should answer is why will you put on this earth? You know, and yeah. whether you believe in God or higher power, the right. bottom line is, you know, what is your purpose, your mission? So mm-hmm. I think I'm clear today. The second thing I think an effective leader in, in clarifying your vision is you have to understand what your values are. What are the things that you're going to live? Like one of my most important values is living a life in, of integrity. Mm-hmm. And when I do that consistently, that again is going to go down to the people you work with. And if they know that their leader is someone that has integrity, it tends to manifest throughout their whole organization, team, right. whatever involved in. So I think those are the two things in helping you clarify your vision. And once you do that, then I think it's getting buy-in from your group, your business, your organization. They have an overall mission statement. You know, what are you guys going to live on a daily basis? And that's the key. You know, we can all put up on a wall, you know, this is our our mission statement. Right. But if we're not living that on a day-to-day basis, Uh, then you really are going to struggle, which leads me to my second key. And that is to build trust in your organization. And building trust is something that I think we all agree is essential to having a successful team or organization is you must have trust. And and then I share a few ideas. One is that trust takes time, but you can shatter trust in a, a very quick way. And I give an example, like one of the things that I changed because when I started to live my mission statement and I wanted to be a role model is I share, I would share with my team and uh, at our parents meeting. So in front of all the parents and all my players that I was going to abstain from drinking alcohol during the season because I, it was important to me to be a model for the student athletes. Okay. Now, if I said that, which I did, for over 20 years. Right. And then two weeks later, I got a DWI. Yeah. What do you think that would have done to our trust? I mean, yeah. that would have shattered it. And I probably would have never been able to get that trust back, at least for that team, for sure. Right. I think that's something as a leader is what you say and what you do have got to be together. And if they're not, then that's going to really hurt trust. I call building trust like building a bank account. So if you put deposits in consistently, the account's going to grow. Right. If you are completely always taking withdrawals out, and especially if you take a major withdrawal, like the example, <laughs> uh, then it's going to shatter that. Yeah. Two other things that we really built trust on was that we were going to share with each other, with our team, that we we're going to tell each other the truth. And uh, in fact, one of the things that we were really strong and we would come down very hard on our players if we found that they were dishonest, that we really wanted to build our whole team and our organization and the the ability to tell each other the truth. Okay. Third thing that I found very powerful, it's a very simple concept, but I think as leaders, we had caught up and I know I did a lot, is that we would want to put on that hat that I'm going to be the leader, I'm going to be the boss, I'm going to always critique. And I found the most effective leaders in this day and age are ones that are trying to catch people doing the right thing and praising them. And I think when you recognize people on a consistent basis, Mm -hmm. really build the trust because then they know that you care about them. Right. That was something that we really changed. And boy, our teams exploded in a, in a real positive way when I changed that mindset from one of the Mr. Katique to Mr. Find a positive about each person. And you know what? And I, I'm, I'm going to say that as a coach, I didn't ever cr- criticize or critique. I did. But I really tried to change that mindset. In fact, I would tell my staff, some days we're just going to have a, a, a B positive day of practice. We're not even going to critique at all. We wouldn't tell our players that, but right. just that concept. Exactly. 
a building that okay. was a really powerful thing in helping us build trust. So let me was, ask you a lot. I'm, that sure. leads, I'm gonna ask you a question. The the question of what are you, what is your take on these sports teams and cheerleading teams saying everyone's on the team? There is no critiquing. There is no saying you need to do better. What are what are your thoughts on that on on that equality that everybody must play? You know what? I think there's a time and place for that. Mm -hmm. In an organization that you're trying to build success and greatness to, then you know it can be open to anybody trying to get involved in your organization. But you right. know, I think you got to have the right people on the bus. Because if you don't... Yeah, it always goes back to that, right? you got to yeah. have the right people on the bus or yeah. nobody wins. Right. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, the one thing I found as a leader is that you do the best you can to create mm -hmm. a positive environment. But you know what? You're not going to please everybody. And if you try to please everybody, you end up failing. Mm -hmm. So I, yeah. I think that's a really essential thing in doing mm -hmm. that. So, you know, there are times and places like, you know, if you're at the park, everybody, include everybody. But if you're building... Yeah. If you're building a successful organization or team or whatever, then, you know, you've got to have the right people. And, and that's part of being an effective leader is you've got to attract the right people that are going to buy in to going back to our first point about the vision, the mission, right. what the organization's all about. Yeah, because everything, everything that they're going to learn in high school all the way up into their life, their career, their job, some of the best learnings I've, I've had was from that, you know, it was from things that I didn't get selected for or I didn't achieve. And so that forced me to work harder. Right. Uh, working harder gave me that confidence and that character to, you know, to be the person that I am. So, yeah, yeah. I, I, I you know, I was just thinking, oh, I wonder what he thinks about that, because it is really um, a touchy subject right now with a lot of people. Yeah, without a doubt. You know, I mean, my, we grew up, or I shouldn't say we, but my son grew up in an era where, you know, he got a trophy for every team he ran. Okay. <laughs> and, I, and I think that was an area that gave a mixed message to people, you know, that just yeah. participating is all you need mm -hmm. to do. And I don't think that's the reality of life. You know, you got to do not. more than participate. You know, you right. got to be able to add value to the team. Or right, um, right. I think my son got the trophies in T-ball, you know, in, you know, in T-ball when they're hitting off a, what, a platform or whatever. Right. Um, and, you know, and everybody's just running in circles. And, and I know they everybody got a trophy for that. And that was fine. But then right. after that, it starts, okay, it's a sport. It's a team. There is competition involved. Mm -hmm. And again, that's what makes us a better person and who we are. So didn't mean to digress there. And I know that you were talking about your seven leadership keys, but I don't want to run out of time because they are absolutely important. But I want to jump over to, you said that you have a new program and you've added uh, a mix into what you do with your keynotes mm -hmm. about the questions to lead an effective life. So I want to jump there because I think that is really important for our listeners to hear what questions should they be asking themselves to lead an effective life, whether they're leading a corporate business, an entrepreneurial business, a basketball team, whatever it is. So what, what are the, some of those questions they should be asking? Yeah, sure. So uh, very quickly, I, I did a follow-up program for a college class that I'd spoke to about leadership. And the professor said, well, what can you do to enhance what you've already spoke about? And I said, you know what? I'm going to come up with 10 questions to help people lead a more effective life. And I think you should be able to answer this. And I'll, I'll say that I can very clearly answer all 10, but early in my life, I would really have struggled with a lot of these questions. So oh. let me get, get through them. Uh, first one is, uh, it starts pretty simple, and then it becomes a little bit more profound. The first one is, as a leader, who's the first person you must lead? And uh, I'll answer that one. That's yourself. All right. And uh, I think as leaders, we often forget the first person you must lead is yourself. Right. Uh, the second one is, how are you doing living your priorities? And I think that's something you're thinking out at each day, you know, your family, your work, your health, uh, you know, the list, your know, financial, all, all those things that are in your life. How are you doing uh, with priorities? And I think something to think about. Third one I put, is, and I mentioned this a little bit before, is what are your top three values? And then, of course, you need to understand them clearly and then, of course, live them. The fourth one is how are you using your time, talent, and treasure mm. to serve others? 
Okay, so that right. I, another one I think is a leader because I really believe in servant leadership. So I think uh, you got to find different ways that you can use your time, talent, and treasure to serve others. The fifth one is, do you have a personal mission statement, which we already talked about? Right. The sixth one is, do you have your five most important goals written down clearly? Number seven was, do you have a personal wellness plan? Are you taking care of yourself? Because I found it's very hard to be an effective leader if you don't feel good about yourself. True. Next one is, do you have a financial independence plan? Again, when I asked that, some of the students looked at me cross eye because it's something that people never have thought about. You know, mm-hmm. well, you know, if you uh, don't think about your finances, then uh, uh, that's why we have a lot of people that are extremely in debt. Yeah. Um, on that one. Next one, do you have a personal growth plan? Another one that I got a lot of uh, looks of skepticism is like, you know, because people don't think about it. And, and it was interesting because I asked this college class, I said, what does commencement mean? Because most of them were getting close to graduation. Right. And you know what? They couldn't tell me. They, they thought it was the end. And commencement yeah. means the beginning. And I think one thing as a leader, the most effective leaders that I've studied and be, and be part of are people that continue to grow and keep getting better. And then the last question I, I said is, what are you doing in your life right now to live and leave a living legacy? So. Mm, love that one. Definitely love that one. That's that's interesting. That's that scene that the legacy piece, and I think it it, it is because we are getting older. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but that question comes up more and more when I'm working with some of my clients. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I myself have been looking looking at that. What's the legacy? You know, what what am, what am I leaving? What am I leaving behind? And of course, with my personal my personal mission is my life's work is helping women, helping professional women achieve their excellence. And I mean, it, I go into more, but yeah, it is important. And when I really took hold of what that meant. It really, it did change my life. It really did change my life. And I fought that for years of what my life's work was. I fought it for years. And mm-hmm. I finally took hold of it about, um, only about two years ago. And mm-hmm. it drastically has changed how I do business, how I work with. And I, and even the way I feel about how I work with people, it's that I'm, it's not a career for me. It's not a job for me. My life's work is to help women achieve their success. So I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled to hear that in, in your 10 questions. So now this is the part where I ask you some questions. So I want you to finish the sentence for me. I am a leader because... Because I understand who I am and how I can serve others. My favorite success quote is... Boy, there's so many. So I'm going <laughs> to... Uh, can I give you two? Sure, goes. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. There are no traffic jams on the extra mile. Hmm. Attitudes are contagious. Is yours worth catching? Okay. So one more. My process for evaluating opportunities is is it a win win situation where I can where it can benefit myself and the people I'm working with. Wow. Okay. I lied. I do have one more question. I missed one. So never have I ever. Wow. That that one I got to think about. (laughs) I ever. It's probably Uh, why I skipped it. (laughs) (laughs) And you can skip it. It sounds like you've you've, you've done it. I will will say that uh, in my life process that I made a, a lot of mistakes with decisions early in my life, especially in college and in early adulthood. And I'm glad that I grew from that because I'm a much prouder of the person I am today. Mm, beautiful. So what's the moment? What is that event in your life, that pivotal moment in your life that really made a difference? Well, it would be two things. The one that, that's significant that I'm kind of known for is the fact that, uh, you know, I put uh, Jason J. Mac McGowan, my team manager that has autism in a game back in 2006, which of course he shocked the world and scored 20 points in less than four minutes, which I, uh, I can't say I, I was playing on that, but, uh, <laughs> uh, but you know, uh, that was significant and, and mm-hmm. because of a couple of reasons. One, certainly because it inspired so many people. And the second thing, it just strengthened my faith 
And for me, it's God in the fact that I do believe in miracles and the miracles yeah. occur all the time. And so I think that was the thing. And then the other thing uh, was earlier in my life is when I got fired from my first coaching position, when I thought I knew everything there was about coaching and realized I didn't. The epiphany there for me was the fact that I knew that I had to really become a better leader. And when I started my personal journey to improve my leadership skills by reading a lot more, by, you know, getting involved in, in talking to people that were effective and successful and mm -hmm. studying the art of leadership um, was very significant. And, you know, I'm not sure I would have ever done that if an event like that where I got fired and was very right. comfortable on it. So. Right, right. So what, what do you believe is the world's greatest wound? The greatest wound, I believe, is that we don't have peace continually on earth, you know, and then people aren't, I'd love to see, because there's certainly so many great people in the world, but, we, you know, we really got to all be on the same page of how we can adopt that servant leadership mindset that we're going to, we're on earth to serve others. Right. That's right. So where does your fear come from? Where does my fear come from? I have fears like everybody else. I think I'm in much better place with myself in the fact that I, it's not that I don't have any fears anymore. I do. I'm much more conscious. I've gotten older of uh, being, uh, you know, I, I've always been fairly health conscious, but now I'm the, because uh, I know the statistics are against me that I'm not going to live forever. <laughs> Although I, we're over the hill now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I would love it, like to live as long as I possibly can. Mm -hmm. Two things. One, that I feel good about myself, uh, you know, from a health and, and a personal thing. And then secondly, that I can continue to live to serve others and help others and, and really create a better world by me being part of it. Mm, uh, that's beautiful. So mm -hmm. will you ever be satisfied? No. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, and, you know, I think that's a good thing as long as uh, I think it's it's great. And something I started doing a few years ago, I read about it all the time and I could never get myself is is to, uh, you know, do some type of meditation and sit quietly. And I'm, I'm really re uh, do it almost every day now. But okay. for many years, I could never. I, uh, this is a waste of time to sit quality, quietly. Yeah. And I wish I would have realized how powerful it is. Uh, because since I've started doing it, I think it's helped me immensely. So I think the key is really just making sure that, you know, you live the life where you're keeping a mindset that, uh, you know, I'm going to do the best I can every mm -hmm. day. Try to get a little bit better each day is what right. really my mindset. So as far as being satisfied, no, I, I'm never satisfied. I always want to get a little bit better. But at the mm -hmm. same time, since I've done more reflecting, I am proud of some things I've accomplished. And I think it's okay to do that. Uh, but I don't think you should ever stop growing. Uh, beautiful. So, so what's next for Coach Johnson? couple things. One, I, I would like to continue to share my message around the, the country. And one of my dreams is to be a global speaker. I've only spoken Canada and the U.S., so I'd like to do that. Uh, a couple of things I'd like to do is I, I'm contemplating strongly on writing another book. I have a book called The Coach of Miracle that I updated. Ooh, nice. and I'd like to do another book on, on leadership. And the other thing I'd like to do is I, I've involved some locally with a couple autism organizations in Rochester. Oh, okay. uh, but one of my dreams would be is to be a real advocate for autism all over the world. Oh, wow. Well, I hope you're, you're definitely putting yourself out there. And I, I think I had shared with you that's what my daughter does. She works with kids with autism. Okay, wonderful. That's her, yeah, that's, that's her specialty. She's in the Carolinas. So mm -hmm. where can an event planner, an event professional find you to bring you in to speak at their next event? Sure. I have a little team. And the best way is we have all our information on my website, coachjimjohnson.com. Uh, we have video. I have a free newsletter. We do a weekly blog that you can sign up for, uh, all complimentary and uh, more information about, you know, the re revised vision of my book and, and it shares all the, the programs that I do. I've been mostly a keynote speaker, although I do a goal setting workshop that I enjoy immensely working okay. with uh, teams and organizations. So easy to find you, coachjimjohnson.com. Simple as that. And I'm sure you're all over social media as well. Yeah, all my social media. I'm, I'm mainly a Twitter, a Facebook, and a LinkedIn person. So those are the three that I we focus in on. And I okay. uh, 
Uh, I, I post a lot of things on all those, you know, between my blogs and quotes and, and yeah. newsletters and all that good stuff. Oh, yeah, because social media could be so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> It could be. I focus on the same three, and then I'll have people say, "Well, why aren't you on Instagram? Or why aren't you on this?" I'm like, I know, I "Three's know. enough. Three's enough. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Three, three is enough. Let those other, let the other people go there. That's okay." Well, Jim, I want to thank you for being here. Always proud to have you on this show. You're just a phenomenal, phenomenal guest. Well, thank you so much, Connie. It's always a pleasure, and keep up your great work. Well, thank you, and for all of our Upper Route listeners, this is your opportunity to go up or go out. Pay attention to Coach Jim Johnson and his leadership traits and ask yourself some of those questions. Do you have a personal mission? If not, you want to get on board and get one. And this is Upper Out, and it is the brand of the Fife Group, and we provide leadership and high-performance mentoring, consulting, and training for C-suite leaders and C-suite entrepreneurs that cut through the BS, providing you tools to decide what's best for you, and that could be up or out. So on behalf of the other half of Team Five, Jeff, and myself, Connie, it's time to move Upper Out, and it's time for you to decide. We're happy to have you here. And until next time, be unstoppable together. Hey, y'all. Thanks for listening to Up or Out with Connie. If you like what you hear and would like to be a guest, email the team at bookme at uporout.com. Learn how you can activate your power at activatemypower.com. We'll see you over there. Activate your power and be unstoppable together.